let's talk about supermoons. Our moon is really cool. I've already made videos about how the phases of the moon work and why there are dark spots on the moon, but I really want to talk about supermoons. But first, what shape is the moon's orbit around Earth? Let's draw it. An orbit is the path an object takes around another object. We orbit the sun and the moon orbits us. When asked to draw the shape of the moon's orbit of Earth, most people would probably draw something like this, a perfect circle. But this shape is wrong. The moon's orbit of Earth is not a circle. In fact, rarely do we find orbits that are perfect circles. Most orbits are actual ellipses or ovals. So we need to squash the circle and now the orbit more closely resembles that of our moon. Though I've exaggerated the aspects of an ellipse. It's actually almost a perfect circle, but it's not quite. And Earth isn't quite in the centre of the ellipse. This may seem insignificant, and it may well be, but it does mean that we get some eccentricities with our moon. Because Earth isn't quite in the centre of the moon's orbit, and because the moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle, there are times when the moon is closer to Earth and times when it is further away. The moon orbits the Earth every 27.322 days. During that time, it's an average of 384,399 kilometers away, but that's an average. During its slightly greater than 27 day orbit, it will get closer to Earth. The point where it's closest to Earth is called its perigee. The moon is about 364,300 kilometers away. That's over 20,000 kilometers closer than its average. There's also the opposite end of the orbit where the moon is the furthest away from Earth and we call that point the apogee. And here it's about 405,500 kilometers away, which is over 40,000 kilometers further than its perigee. So every month as the moon makes its trip around the Earth, it gets a little closer to one end of its orbit and a little further at the other end. But what does that mean? Well, sometimes when the moon is at its perigee, the closest point, it's also a full moon. Because of the way the orbit works and how our orbit around the sun works, all the different phases of the moon get a turn at the perigee in a bit over a year's time. So sometimes we get a full moon. When our moon is at its closest point, and it's a full moon, we call it a perigean full moon. When we get a perigean full moon, the moon is literally closer to us than other full moons and therefore appears bigger and brighter in our sky. It can appear 30% brighter than other full moons and 14% larger in our sky. It's really hard to gauge this though because there's nothing really to compare it to in our night sky, but it is bigger and brighter to us. That's pretty cool. But where do supermoons come in? Well, supermoons aren't a super scientific term. The term supermoon was coined in 1979 by astrologer Richard Knoll. Astrologers aren't people who study space and how it works, but rather attribute fortune and human behavior to the movement of the stars and planets. And I apologize if I've gotten that wrong. Anyway, Knoll called a supermoon any full moon that's within 90% of the distance of the perigee, which means generally that we get a full moon at least either side of the perigee that we can call a supermoon. And depending on where the moon is sitting, we may get up to four supermoons in a row. For it's actually reasonably rare for a full moon to land bang on the perigee point. Usually it's a little to either side. Supermoons are all brighter and closer than normal full moons, but the perigean moon, the perigean full moon, is the closest and brightest. This means that we usually get three or four supermoons in a row. That's pretty cool. They aren't at the same time of year either, as the length of time between perigean moons is about 14 lunar months, a lunar month being the time between full moons, which makes for about a year, a month and 18 days between perigean full moons. So supermoons are closer and brighter than normal full moons, but is there anything that a supermoon changes? Well, not really. Though, when the moon is closer to Earth, the high tides will be higher as the pull on the Earth's water is stronger. But that's almost a monthly cycle. When the moon is nearest its apogee, the high tides will tend to be lower. Tides are caused by the moon, as the moon's gravitational pull pulls the waters towards it a little. Which is also why the time of high and low tides keep changing, because the moon keeps orbiting, which is pretty cool in and of itself, I think. And that's pretty well supermoons. The moon's orbit of Earth 
isn't a perfect circle and the Earth isn't in the perfect centre. So there are some points when the Moon is closer to Earth in its lap around it and some points where it is further away. When a full Moon coincides with being closer we call it a supermoon and we often get a few of these in a row. In 2024 we happen to have a supermoon in August, September and we'll have one in October and November too. And that's pretty cool. I think it's really quite lovely that the Moon's orbit isn't perfect, that other planets and the Sun also pull and impact it, causing it to be not quite a perfect circle and enough for it to get bigger and smaller in our night sky. The bodies in our solar system are all connected in this way and supermoons are a way that we see this connection in action. The Sun and the other planets influence over the Moon means that it doesn't orbit in a perfect circle, which I think it's just really cool. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below and with the like button. If you want to see more moon videos, check out my moon playlist. And if you haven't learned enough about supermoons, check out the resources I used to write this video. They're in the linked document in the description. And if you'd like to see more videos that I hope inspire a sense of curiosity and wonder, please consider subscribing to That's Pretty Cool. Thanks again for watching. Take care, stay curious, and I will see you next time.